equations and inequalities, and in this lesson we are looking at equations with fractions. I'm going to remind you that you now know three methods for solving quadratic equations. Factorizing, completing the square, or using the quadratic formula. When we have a look at example one, you will now see that we are working with fractions. In the first lesson on equations and inequalities, I told you that we always need to be careful when we have fractions and ensure that the denominator never becomes zero. So in our case, we need to focus on the denominator. In this case, we have the denominator x minus 1, and that can never be zero. Therefore, x can never be 1. And you need to keep that in mind when you get to your answers. Our next step is to get the lowest common multiple. So if we look at our question, we have three terms. Our first term is actually x over 1, and our last term 4 over 1. So if we now have a look at our three denominators, it is clear that the lowest common multiple will be x minus 1. And once I have my lowest common multiple, I can go and multiply each term by this lowest common multiple. I'm going to start off multiplying my first term x by the lowest common multiple, then the second term is 2 over x minus 1, and I'm going to multiply that by x minus 1. And on the right, I have 4 multiplied with x minus 1. In my first term, I'm now going to multiply in. So I'm going to get x squared minus x. My second term, x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 will be 1, and then I'm left only with 2. And on the right, I'm once again going to multiply in to get 4x minus 4. Now I have a quadratic equation, so I take all the terms to one side. Now I have a quadratic equation, so I can either factorize, use the quadratic formula, or do completing the square. When I factorize, I will have x minus 2 times by x minus 3. And that means my answers are either x can be 2, or x can be 3. Now I just need to remember that right at the beginning we said x can never be 1, so that means both of these answers are acceptable. Sometimes it is not clear right from the start what the lowest common multiple will be. Then it helps to factorize all your denominators. So in my first term, when I factorize my denominator, I will have x minus 2 times x plus 2. On the right, I'm just going to write the 4 as 4 over 1 again. And my last term, the denominator cannot be factorized, but I'm just going to put it in a bracket as if I took out a common factor of 1. Now I can determine my lowest common multiple, and that will be x minus 2 multiplied with x plus 2. And once again, when I have the common multiple, I need to remember that x can then not be 2 and x can not be equal to minus 2 because that will cause the denominator to become 0. Now that I have my lowest common multiple, I can multiply every single term by that common denominator. Start off multiplying the first term by x minus 2 and x plus 2. On the right, the 4 will be multiplied with the x minus 2 and x plus 2. And the last term will also be multiplied by the x minus 2, x plus 2. My first term I can simplify by saying x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 and x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. So I'll be left with 3x squared minus 9. On the right, I'm going to multiply out the two brackets to get x squared minus 4. And my last term once again can be simplified by saying x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. And I'm left with 2 multiplied by x minus 2. When you come to a point where you feel confident enough, 
you can skip the previous step and go straight into this one. Now I need to simplify. Once I've simplified, I can see that this is a quadratic equation, so I'm going to get all the terms on one side equal to zero, and now I can factorize into x minus 3 and x plus 1, which means x can either be 3 or x can be minus 1. Now I just need to double check, and right at the beginning we said x cannot be plus or minus 2, which means both these answers are acceptable. In example 3, I'm once again going to start off by factorizing all the denominators. So my first term's denominator is already factorized as far as possible. If I have a look at my second term, you will see that it is an increasing order of x, where the first and the last term are both in decreasing order of x. So to get them all similar, I would like to write this second term with the x in front, so I'm going to write it as x minus 4. But now I've changed the signs. Minus x became plus x, and plus 4 became minus 4, which means I have to change the sign right in front. On the right, the denominator can still be factorized into x minus 4, x plus 3. And now I can get my lowest common multiple, or lowest common denominator, and that will be x plus 3 multiplied with x minus 4. And now, once again, I need to remember that x can then not be equal to minus 3 or 4, because then the denominator will become 0. So now I'm again at the step where I multiply with this lowest common multiple right through. And when I simplify, x plus 3 divided by itself means I'm left with the numerator, which is 2x minus 5, that I now have to multiply by x minus 4. In my second term, x minus 4 will simplify, and I'm left with 1 times x plus 3. And on the right, x plus 3 divided by itself and x minus 4 divided by itself will simplify, and I'm left with 7 times 1. Now, once again, I can multiply up, then I can simplify, and then once again, I can factorize into x minus 4 times by x minus 2 equal to 0, which means that x is 4 or x is 2. But now I need to remember that at the beginning, we said x cannot be minus 3 or 4, so in this case, 4 will be not valid. And my only acceptable answer is x is 2.